Hey, Dan Cuchimillo here with NorCal Sports Network with another video. This video is on the San Francisco Giants, and what I think they should do is get pitching, pitching, pitching. Before we get started, I want to thank Chapman Law Group for their sponsoring of this video. Check out Chapman Law Group in the description of this video. All right, let's get right into this. San Francisco Giants. What direction are they going to go? Are they going to choose the mid path and just work around the edges? Are they going to do a full rebuild or are they going to go for it? Depending on what your path is, and we'll talk more about this on NorCal Sports Network live on Tuesday night at 8 p.m. You won't want to miss that show because we're going to be talking about the plan to fix the Giants. What do they do? They'll have to choose a lane. But for right now, for purposes of this video, we're going to talk about the Giants actually trying to be good. Let's say they're a few moves away from actually being competitive. And how do you win championships? You win it with great pitching and defense and timely hitting. The Giants are not going to be able to attract star free agent hitters. But one thing they can do, and it's been proven that they can do, is they can get pitchers to sign with the Giants. Oracle Park, a great place to pitch and a great place to get your numbers in, uh, you know, com very competitive type numbers where you become a uh, Cy Young possibility. And if you're one of those pitchers that wants to come up in a contract year, get better contracts like Kevin Gosman and Carlos Rodon did. They left the Giants and got more money. So let's see what the Giants should do. All right. <clears throat> Pitching is critical in this game. You really can't win without it unless you've got just mashers like the L.A. Dodgers. And even then, for them to get past San Diego, to get into the uh, – NLCS and get past the Mets and the NLCS. They got great pitching. Even though they were limited, they shut down the Padres the last two games and they basically shut the Mets down and they shut the Yankees down. They had three starting pitchers and their bullpen showed up and every starting pitcher showed up. So it worked out for them. But that's a rarity when you only have three. I think the Giants need five to seven starters. I mean, they need obviously five, but I think you need seven because you got to account for injuries. So here's what I would do if I'm the San Francisco Giants and I want to be competitive in 2025 and beyond. You need pitching. What pitching is out there this year? Well, unfortunately, the Giants waited too long or didn't make a good enough offer. You say a Kikuchi, the lefty signed a three-year deal with the LA Angels, roughly 21 million a year, three years, 63 million. He's a guy I wanted. So he's off the board. So now where do you go? And Kikuchi didn't even have a qualifying offer. So we have to look at some pitchers here. All right. Corbin Burns, he's the top guy on the market. Him and Blake Snell, they're the top two left and Max Freed. All right. Burns and Freed come with qualifying offers. Which one do I want to go with if I can go with one of the two? I'm going with Corbin Burns. He eats a lot of innings. So does Freed. But I can go either way, Burns or Freed. I think Burns is going to be a little more expensive than Freed. Freed's a year older. Uh, Burns is more uh, power pitcher. Uh, gets, uh, how do you say, uh, probably goes a little deeper, more innings. But I would be okay with either. Now, you've got the lefties already in um, Harrison and Ray coming back. But uh, if the Dodgers load up with a lot of lefties, and if they happen to land Juan Soto, I would want Freed over Burns. But I'm going to just say let's go with Corbin Burns because I think Freed's going to be an L.A. Dodger. I really do. I see that happening. So let's go with Corbin Burns. And he signs for, let's say, six years, uh, about $200 million, okay? What is that? Uh, roughly, what, 34 
million a year, right in that range. Um, I didn't add that up. I should have just taken my calculator and see what uh, 200 divided by six is. What is 200 divided by six in my head? Yeah, 33 and a third. Okay, so somewhere around six years, 200. And that gets Blake Snell, or uh, not Blake Snell, Corbin Burns. Next, I go back and sign Blake Snell. He's dominant. I think Blake Snell, five years, 155. That's 31 million a year. Um, I think that's about right for Blake Snell. And I think he would sign that deal. He pretty much had that with the Giants for two years. You give him four more years on top of what he had last year. Five years, 155, 160. So you got 33 and 31. You got 64 million. The Giants, if you look at the CBT, the Current CBT is at 241 million. The Giants are currently uh, at about one. Where are they at? They're 174 and a half. Okay. So they've got 66 million, 67 million roughly to play with. So you add those two and you're still under the CBT. Now I still want another pitcher, and that's Jack Flaherty. You want to go out and compete? Let's go compete, okay? If not, let's you know, let's just sell everything off and go home, and and do the rebuild. And I'm fine with doing a rebuild, but I'm just this video purposes. If you want to compete, okay. So now we've got Burns and Snell in the house, and Jack Flaherty. Jack Flaherty's probably going to cost you twenty five million a year, maybe. Four year deal, 100 million, somewhere in that range. Um, I haven't even looked actually at Spot Track to see what uh, what they say uh, uh, on this, but uh, or Sport Track, I should say. Let's see what Sport Track has to say about what Jack Flaherty's value is. And we can we can take a look at uh, at that if I can find it, but. Uh, We'll, we'll see what that MLB free agents. There we go. Let me pull that up. Well, Kikuchi is, is signed. And we're looking here at Jack Flaherty. Jack Flaherty, they're saying he's 29. Let's see what his market value is showing up in it. 21 million. Okay. So there's, they're, they're saying a three-year, $63 million deal. Yeah, Flaherty might be in that Kikuchi range. So maybe I went a little high. So let's say 22 million a year for three years, 66 million. So 64 million for Burns and Snell and another 22. Now you're at, uh, what, 86 million and you're 12 million over. All right. You've added three starting pitchers of great caliber. And uh, maybe you can go out and get a Nathan Avaldi for pretty cheap. I'm sure uh, Avaldi. His market value is probably not nearly what uh, any of these other guys are. In fact, Nathan Avaldi's market value is uh, two years, 43 million. So he's right at 21, 22 million as well. So get three or four of those guys. All right. Go get three of the four. How about Burns, Snell, and Flaherty? Now you're um, 86 million or 12 million over. What do you do to get back under? the uh, CBT so you're not paying the tax. All right, you've heard me talk about this before, guys. I've just added three really good pitchers. I've added Corbin Burns, Blake Snell, two Cy Young Award winners, and Jack Flaherty, a very solid pitcher. Now I am going to trade someone. I'm going to trade Logan Webb. All right, guys? And I I'm getting rid of Logan Webb's he accounts for uh, next year 18 million. So now I have gone from 12 million over to 6 million under. All right. And I am going to move off of Yaz. That's another 9 million. Although you may have to, to pay half of his salary to trade him because I don't know anybody that might want to take him for nine, but maybe you can give up somebody like a Duvall and they'll eat all of Yaz's contract. 
and you get some, so you get back under the CBT and you've gotten rid of, now you're uh, 6 million, now you're 15 million under and you've gotten rid of Yaz. I would also move off of guys like uh, maybe a uh, Taylor Rogers, that's 11 or 11 million against the CBT. Um, maybe try and trade a Tom Murphy and bring up somebody as a backup uh, that's less. He's got uh, four and a half million. Maybe move off, definitely move off of Wilmer Flores. Now you've saved yourself five million there. Um, and no, you're, you're way under. Now you have room to go out and sign maybe a Hassan Kim as your shortstop. All right. Um, so you've added three pitchers. You've added uh, somebody like a Hassan Kim. You can go out and get maybe a Patrick Wisdom to play first base, who's a free agent. He won't cost you much. He could be a great one-year stopgap. He's got some power. He can also play a little third base if you need some more infielders. But Patrick Wisdom, he's a guy that's got 25-plus home run power. Went to college at St. Mary's. I, I like a move like that. So I've added pitching, I've added, and I've moved Webb off. Before you say, uh, what are you doing moving Webb off? Why would you get rid of Webb? Well, because I can get a really good prospect. Oh, by the way, I forgot what I'm getting for Webb. I'm getting an everyday player for Webb. How's that? Um, I haven't come up with the exact player. Maybe a Kobe Mayo, somebody like that from Baltimore. Uh, you can get uh, a Marcelo Mayer from Boston, possibly. Um, look, there's players out there that you can get for Webb, and Webb will bring you the most return of any giant in the organization. So that's why I'm going to move off of Webb, because I've brought in three solid pitchers. And um, let me just show you something here. This is uh, Stathead. Take a look at these two starting pitchers here. The one on the left, uh, a little bit more innings pitched on the left by, what, uh, 26 innings, win-loss record almost identical, 55 and 42, 55 and 41, ERA 3.42 to 3.63, ERA plus is pretty close, strikeouts, the one on the right's quite a bit higher, K percentage is higher. Uh, base on balls, a little bit higher, about 3% on the right. Um, the games pitch, pretty similar. Pretty similar in games started. War, a little higher on the left, about uh, 4 or 5, roughly. But, guys, if you look at that, you're looking at pretty close to the same pitcher, wouldn't you say? Pretty darn close. Well, let's take a look at who these pitchers are on the left and the right. There you go, guys. Pretty much the same pitcher. So I've replaced Webb with Flaherty. I've got a great young player for Webb. I've added Corbin Burns. I've added Blake Snell to the pitching staff. And I basically still have a guy like Webb because I have Jack Flaherty, who's pretty similar. And... Now I've got a rotation that is Snell, Corbin Burns, Jack Flaherty, Robbie Ray, Hayden Birdsong. That's five. I've also got Kyle Harrison and Landon Roop. I've got seven pitchers. And you can always bring in another free agent pitcher if you really want to bring in somebody who's a little older that's not going to cost you much. There's guys like Matthew Boyd, who would be uh, a starting pitcher, a lefty, not too much, no qualifying offer there. There's a Cal Quantrill. There's a Frankie Matas. Um, in fact, there's even a Wade Miley or a Zach Davies. There's all kinds of pitchers that you can just get signed. Some of these guys are going to be looking for a job. You can sign them to a minor league deal and – you know, they don't make the team, they're in the minors, and they're ready to come up when you need a pitcher. There's a lot of guys out there, okay? Uh, Alex Cobb's even out there. Michael Lorenzen. Um, 
you can take a shot at some of these guys. Okay. Andrew Heaney, Patrick Sandoval, Charlie Morton, all these guys, look, you can give them minor league deals. You don't need to give them a major league deal. So this is my plan for the San Francisco Giants. Pitching, pitching, pitching. Tell me what you think about these comments. This may be a crazy idea. This is, again, this is an idea if you want to compete. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying do this because it's not going to take them anywhere. Look, this is a move if you want to compete and want to get into the playoffs. You get into the playoff with a rotation of Blake Snell, Corbin Burns, Jack Flaherty, Robbie Ray, and either a fifth starter. You know, there's a Kyle Harrison who could do great, a um, a uh, Hayden Birdsong. You know, uh, the it's it's endless possibilities. And I mentioned Landon Roop. He could be a pin guy. He can be a spot starter. Look, this is a move to make the Giants better, and they still have money left over to go out and sign a Hassan Kim. And don't forget what you're going to get back for Logan Webb. You're going to get an everyday young player who's ready to contribute in the major leagues. Again, tell me what you think about this video. Make sure that you comment below on these videos. And also, don't forget to please like and subscribe. Thank you in advance for that. Really do appreciate you guys liking these videos and, and subscribing to NorCal Sports Network. And uh, check us out Tuesday night. That would be Tuesday night, November. What is that uh, date? Uh, the 26th. I can't even remember the dates here. Yeah, Tuesday, the 26th. Check us out at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We're going to talk about which the Giants should do. We're going to cover it all. They're going to We're going to tell them to pick a lane, either rebuild, and get in the slow lane or get in the fast lane and compete for a championship. But stop, stay out of that middle lane. So thanks for watching, guys. Really do uh, appreciate it again and uh, would appreciate your comments down below. All right, thanks again for watching NorCal Sports Network. Take care, everybody.